Welcome into the Gigum 24-7 Sports Podcast. I am Andrew Hattersley. We are lucky to be joined today by Cole Kubelik, host of the Mac and Cube show. I know you guys just got off the air, right, on, on the, this morning and um, very familiar with the SEC and college football. Cole, thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, uh, just uh, talking talking college football here in Birmingham. It's always fun, especially with uh, how things have gone so far this season. Nothing better, right, than an SEC play, play getting going now. What what kind of interests you about this matchup between Texas A and M and Auburn? I know it's it's not one of the ranked matchups, but uh, seems like there's a lot of intriguing storylines on both sides. No, I agree. I think um, you know you, you look at first just the level of competition that both these teams have played, and, and Texas A and M did not play well against Miami, so. Yeah. I, I don't think that that just makes them a more talented team or maybe even a better team when we get to the end of the season uh, because there are a lot of self-inflicted wounds that A&M had in that game. I, I thought the, the adjustments were pretty poor. Um, the plan going in probably didn't anticipate getting what they were going to get specifically on defense, and, and, and it ended up being a game that didn't go their way. Uh, you know, Auburn goes to Cal and gets a, a nice win for the program for where it is right now. I think Cal's going to be a, a, a team that's better than people think, but I don't think it's a great football team. And the talent level is nowhere near than what AM's and going to have. And then I think, too, you look at this Auburn offensive line. It was supposed to be rebuilt this offseason. Dylan Wade comes in from Tulsa. Avery Jones comes in from ECU. Xavier Miller, the number one junior college offensive lineman in the country, comes in. And Gunnar Britton from Western Kentucky. It's supposed to look totally different, and it just hasn't yet. It's not that it's been bad. It just it hasn't looked totally different. So – you're going to go up against probably the most talented, deepest defensive line that you're going to see all season. I mean, and that includes, I mean, LSU has, has Wingo and Smith, but I mean, this group goes deeper than that. And I would say Shamar Turner's playing better than anybody in college football right now that I've seen on the yeah. defensive line. I mean, he's playing lights out. So that's a massive test for this group. I don't think, you know, I've had a lot of people ask me, can that group get a push? Can they find a way to run the ball? I don't think Coach Freeze and Coach Montgomery go into this game thinking, oh, we're going to live running the ball between the tackles. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to be there. So uh, does that mean DJ plays fewer numbers in the box because of that defensive line? Does he play a little bit lighter? I, I don't know. But um, I think it's an interesting matchup from that perspective. I, I do think A&M has some coverage issues on the perimeter down the field. This is an Auburn receiver core that was supposed to be rebuilt. We saw Jair Shorter for the first time really do something last week. Rivaldo Fairweather at tight end. You know, Jay Fair had a nice camp and has now had a pretty good season. So can that group show up and be different? And then obviously what Peyton Thorne and Robbie Ashford have done at quarterback makes it interesting. Um, and I think Connor Wigman is playing as well as anybody in the SEC right now. I think he and Spencer Rattler, Jaden Daniels, Pryto Jackson Darton there are, are towards the top of the league as far as just how they're performing. The Auburn defense hasn't been able to generate much of a pass rush. And, and, and that's got to be pretty concerning for Hugh Freeze and his staff. Now, when you look at this A&M pass rush, there's been a lot of conversation around College Station about it, about them not being able to, really that Miami game, not being able to get pressure. What have you seen from that defensive line? And, and have you does the lack of pass rush kind of concern you as well? Well, it, it's not overly concerning to me just because I know the kind of individuals that they have and I know that it'll yeah. come around. Um, you know, obviously it's been, it's been a tough off season with the loss of Terry price, and that's going to be a setback yeah. to those guys from a technical and fundamental standpoint. And then just, you know, losing your coach and the continuity that you had in that room is going to be very difficult, but I, I don't, I think the Miami situation was one where, you know, they did a good job getting the ball out pretty quick at, at different points in times and making life not only easier on their offensive line, but easier on their quarterback, which is where a lot of the success came from. So I, I'm based on what I know AM has from a talent perspective, it's not something that I'm concerned about long term. And, and I've already seen a few of those individuals, like I said, uh, yeah. do some things that just wow you when you see them on film. So uh, that's a big concern of mine in this game, to be honest with you. And I, I think I think you're going to see Auburn do a lot to sort of try to keep that defensive line honest, keep the backside honest, the rush lane integrity honest. So whether it's draws, whether it's quick throws, zone reads, where the quarterback has a chance to keep, all those things have to complement what Auburn really wants to do because if you let these guys tee off, you're going to have a long day. No doubt. And you mentioned um, Shamar Turner on your podcast earlier this week, just some things you had seen on film from him. How, how good do you think he can be, and do you think he can kind of emerge as one of those better defensive linemen in the SEC? I think he has a chance to be the best defensive lineman in college football. And – the reason for that is you can play him inside and he can strike and shed and two gap as well as anybody I've seen 
the difference, there's a lot of guys who can do that well. I mean, that's it's it's not – you know, usually the guys that do that, though, you don't hear a lot about them. Like Cam Jackson at Florida last week was a perfect example. He's playing nose guard, and he was two-gapping. Like, I mean, it was, it, it was clinic tape what he was doing uh, and forcing guys to cut back and then playing both gaps – but he didn't have, you know, 13 tackles or anything like that. So you're not going to see it in the box score. So a lot of guys can do that, but it's not going to show up and people aren't going to talk about it, even though it is affecting the game. The difference is Cam Jackson can't really go outside of an offensive tackle and give you a legitimate edge rush. And Shamar can do that. I mean, he could live on the edge if he wanted to. If they wanted to play him as a four down defensive end, I think he would be fine there. I think he's loose enough, flexible enough. He's got enough twitch to be able to do that. Now, He's not going to have, you know, the same kind of burst as, you know, one of these 255-pound speed rushers, but I, I think he could make a living there if he had to. So his versatility is really what sticks out to me. And then just he he's – there's certain guys that just from a physical perspective just seem like they're giving a little more effort or playing a little bit harder or doing a little bit more, and he's got that going for him right now as well. No doubt. Got to ask you about Connor Wigman as well. Uh, there's a lot of buzz, obviously, around College Station given – you know, the quarterback troubles that they've had in the past couple of years. Do you think he has a chance to, by the end of the year, be kind of be the best quarterback in the SEC? Or where do you kind of put him in that hierarchy? I mean, I put him in the, in the, I'll put him on the top shelf right now with, with yeah. the, with the, with the, with the first tier. Like I said, I think Daniels is up there. Um, I, Spencer, people are going to just look at what South Carolina's record is and not, not know about the lack of protection that Spencer's been dealing with. I mean, he's throwing footballs to Luke Doty, and he's handed off to Jacaron Joyner. Both those guys played quarterback in college. So, yeah. um, you know, his best receiver has played maybe three quarters. Um, and I know Evan Stewart missed the last game, so Connor Wigman didn't have him. But I'll tell you, man, Connor Wigman really, like, won me over. Like, he, he won my heart with that Miami game. Like, the fact yeah. that he stood in the pocket and did what he did and took the hits that he did – I was beyond impressed. And I don't know that people will say, well, interceptions and incompletions, that's it's fine. Like the protection wasn't what it needed to be. And he stood in there and completed a lot of balls that not a lot of guys would have even held on long enough to attempt to try to complete. So yeah. I think he's throwing it well. He's getting it out well. He feels like he's got a good feel and confidence inside that offense right now. So I absolutely think with the weapons he has, and the thing that I like about AM right now is that like last week they showed a little bit more diversity in the run game. It's a little bit more unique. They're changing it up a little bit. Obviously, the presentation pre-snap has been a little bit different, too. So I think you'll see it continue to grow throughout the course of the season. And he obviously has a chance to be there in that top class of SEC quarterbacks. No doubt, no doubt. And I'll get you out on, on this one. Looking at this weekend overall at this game, what are some of the keys that you'll be watching um, on both sides um, heading into this weekend? I think Auburn's got to generate a pass rush first and foremost. Now, how many people do they have to dedicate to that? You know, Jalen McLeod, the App State transfer, can help with that. Keldrick Falk, the freshman, is off the edge. He's done some good things. But the middle of the Auburn defense has to play better. Um, they have been displaced from their gaps at times, uh, haven't gotten, haven't really dented the pocket very much to affect the passer. That, that's got to be different. Um, and it, it You've got one of your best defensive backs in Keontae Scott that's going to be out. That's not going to help. Jalen Simpson's a little bit nicked up. If the secondary is not healthy, this is a really good group of receivers that A&M brings to the table. You don't want to go in um, and not be at full strength on the back end of your defense with what you're going to have to face. And Jake Johnson started coming on last week. He looked pretty good too. So, I mean, the tight end is going to have to be something you're worried about. Um, I, I just think the different ways that State can hit you – the fact that the Auburn defense has been a little bit inconsistent, it's like, okay, Eugene Asante was great here. DJ James was great here. But it doesn't feel like collectively it's been B-plus or A or A-minus yet. It's going to have to be against this group, especially on the road. And then just what do you lean on offensively? Because like I said, I, I don't think they're going to be able to just run the ball. Um, it's going to have to be manufactured rush yards, quick throws out on the perimeter. You saw a lot of that against Sanford last week. And I, see, I'm a believer that – some of these lettuce games that people don't pay attention to and don't like, you can really get a good idea of what's coming the next week. Yeah. You know, if you, you saw like LSU against Grambling, they force fed the ball to Malik neighbors early. So they were making a point to say, we're going to get you involved. You're a part of the game plan. And then look what happens against Mississippi state the next week. You look at Florida against McNeese. They could have gone out there and gotten cute and let Graham Mertz throw the ball over the place. Well, they do. And with two tight ends, they ran the ball for the majority of the game. Well, they wanted to emphasize that as what they were going to have to have moving forward to be successful, and then they gut the Tennessee defense on the ground. So uh, some of the creativity in the run game from a and I liked that last week. 
And, and defensively, just the individual performances up front are what make me nervous for Auburn in this one because that offensive line just doesn't have the continuity yet, and that, that group's banged up as well. Um, so I'll be interested to see like Xavier Miller. I know he was a little bit dinged up. Cam Stutz was a little bit dinged up. I don't know if they're going to go or not. Um, but that could be an area of concern, especially with that defensive line. And you bring up a very good point. Jimbo Fisher actually talked about that this week, about setting things up for the next week and 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 all that. So, Cole, big thank you. I know you've got a very busy schedule, so really appreciate you you jumping on and, and enjoy this weekend of college football. Absolutely, Andrew. Appreciate awesome. you having me, man. Thanks, Cole.